Hey, it's Eric Jensen. I'm going to be starting to do a little podcast or whatever on just some thoughts going on in sports. Um, So with the Olympics over, I wanted to say a few things on those. Those are some of my favorite things. Only happens once every four or five years. So I do I appreciate them a lot. And man, the the 400 meter hurdles races, both uh, men's and women's, those were good races. Those were intense and close and breaking world records, good stuff. And uh, so props to to those athletes, that, that guy from Norway and the men's 400 hurdles, amazing. Um, and Ry Benjamin for the U.S. Kitten Silver was pretty amazing too. But uh, the biggest story coming from the Olympics, of course, was Simone Biles um, dropping out of the gymnastics routine. I'm sure everyone has heard every opinion on good, bad, <laughs> whatever with that. Uh, but I'll throw in my two cents because, uh, well, my opinion is... Uh, it's the right one, so <laughs> you can listen to it. Um, uh, do I think that it's bad that she quit? Uh, I don't know. If she was going to get injured or whatnot doing it, I, I obviously am not a gymnast. I don't know what the twisties are. Um, so it could be smart, uh, I guess, to, to um, step out and not risk injury. Uh, I wouldn't uh, fault anyone for doing that. I mean, you even saw that in the in the marathon at the end of the Olympics. There were people that, you know, it was too hot, too humid, their bodies weren't going to take it, so they dropped out. Now, the thing I want to get at is it's probably not a heroic thing. That's what a lot of people have, were saying that, oh, she was heroic for stepping out because it brings, you know, it brings, uh, you know, the light on mental issues and that sort of stuff. And that's where I'm going to have to disagree a little bit. I don't see how quitting uh, is is a heroic thing. It may be a necessary thing. And like I said before, it could be the smart thing to do, but it's not a heroic thing. And uh, and I don't think we should praise athletes for doing that. The, the heroic things are when we think of someone that fights through that. You think of Brett Favre, you know, playing the day after his dad died. Uh, or, you know... <laughs> Ronnie Lott, you know, cutting off the finger and, and uh, you know, getting back out there and playing anyways. Or in the realm of gymnastics, uh, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but the, the girl in, um, in 96 who didn't need to, uh, it turned out, but still went and jumped with like a broken ankle to win the gold medal for her team. You know, that's a heroic thing because you're putting your teammates First, you're putting your body on the line uh, to accomplish something great. Uh, now, is it always the smart thing? No, but that's why it's heroic when someone is able to overcome that and and do good. So, you know, I would have more respect, especially since it's a team thing that that Simone Biles, you know, quit. That I would have had more respect for. Her, I think if she tried her best and flopped and failed, uh, you know, that could happen. And I would have more respect uh, for her if she did that. Not saying that she didn't do the, you know, wrong thing for her again, but I don't think it was heroic. I don't think we should praise her for it. Uh, It's, yeah. Anyways, those are, I don't think you should quit, especially on your team and be, and be praised. And I do think it was quitting on your team. Again, uh, it can be justified quitting. If you're injured, if you break your leg, you're going to have to stop. But I think it's important to try and fight through, especially when you've labeled yourself the greatest of all time, uh, which she has done. The greatest of all time does, continues fighting through 
when things get rough. And, you know, if you lose, you lose. The greatest of all time can lose. Uh, we think of Tom Brady in the, in the NFL. He's lost a couple Super Bowls. And that doesn't mean that he's not the greatest quarterback of all time, if you want to call him that. Um, and so that's, that's, my, uh, that's my thoughts on Simone Biles. Uh, I mean, I'm glad she was able to get back out there and perform her last event by herself. But really, uh, not a heroic thing to do. Much more heroic is to do your best, win or lose, uh, put your body on the line. That's what sports heroes do. Michael Jordan flu game, for example. And, and just throwing that out there again. Uh, you know, was it smart to do that? Probably not. But that's what you do when, or when you know, <laughs> when, when people are relying on you and when, uh, when sports heroism is on the line. You, you ignore your body and you do what needs to be done to do your best. Anyways, um, I, I know the Olympic ratings were down, but I thoroughly enjoyed them. I love them every, every year. I'm glad the U.S. was able to overtake uh, China there at the end and the gold medal count. Uh, go USA. Even though I've got a Sweden jersey on. <laughs> but um, uh, the other thing I wanted to just briefly mention and talk about is with uh, Texas I'm big college football. We'll talk a lot about college football in here. With Texas and Oklahoma going over to the SEC, uh, there's a lot of discussion on what are the other conferences going to do. The SEC has become a super conference uh, with, you know, I think it's 16 members now, which is a little absurd in my opinion, that you can't really play everyone all the time at that point, but they're making a lot of money. <clears throat> Coming from the West Coast, I care about the Pac-12, especially USC football. Um, and so I'm going to look at things from a West Coast bias, West Coast uh, perspective here. Uh, and so what does the Pac-12 need to do? Uh, and I wouldn't, if I was the Pac-12, go in and pick up the scraps of the Big 12. Uh, as much, as good as Kansas is in basketball, it's not going to give you much uh, if you get them. You're not going to make a whole lot more money on a TV deal. It's way far out there. Uh, they're not that good. In fact, they're awful at football. Uh, and so I wouldn't... Um, and then everyone else in the Big 12, I mean, you can get some Texas schools, Baylor, Texas Tech. Just not worth it. Not not worth it. They don't bring enough to the table. Uh, in fact, I would rather stay out west if we were going to expand and get a Boise State or a BYU or, or, or a San Diego State or something like that. Now, having said that, I wouldn't grab any of those either. I think the smartest thing that the Pac-12 could do is try and make an alliance on the TV deal with the Big Ten. And not per se join conferences completely, but merge merge somewhat in the TV deals and make an arrangement where you're playing each other, uh, like one game a season at least uh, is is that, and then have a instead of a stupid you know Big Ten or Pac-12 championship game, get the regular season champs, and uh, and then play us you know, a semi-Rose Bowl, uh, you know, Big Ten, Pac-12, uh, uh, the traditional way, as it always has been for the, uh, you know, for the Big Ten, Pac-12 champ. I think if you can get a TV deal between those two conferences, which have high academic standards, they're, they're the tops in the West, tops in the Midwest, um, I think you could match SEC numbers uh, in fact, surpass SEC numbers with those two conferences together. And then, and, you know, you would have to divide it up between everyone. With the dividing up, I would strongly encourage the Big Ten to drop Rutgers and Maryland, too. Let them go to the ACC or who knows what. I, I think I would want the Big Ten to drop back down to 
uh, to 12 teams. And then you have 12 in the Pac-12, 12 in the Big Ten, have have conference games um, interchanged at least once or twice a season, shared the money on the TV deals. You You would make so much money on that. And I think that is the smartest thing to do rather than trying to grab you know, leftovers, or if you're the Big Ten, trying to grab California schools, and then you're, you know, gra- you know, have, having uh, Ohio State go out to USC or UCLA or Stanford on a, you know, women's soccer trip. I, it just doesn't doesn't make sense. But I think one game, two games a year, yeah, you could do that. You could manage that. Anyways, that's. Uh, that's my two cents on what the Pac-12 should do. Try and find a way to merge with the Big Ten uh, on a TV right deal, and then um, and then keep it. You know, the Pac-12, just those twelve teams. There's no need to pick up junk. That's not going to help you. And uh, and USC, uh, which we're always going to talk about here, fight on. Um, USC needs to be the driver of any of these conversations. They're the most powerful program out West. Even uh, even though Oregon has the Nike money, USC needs to be the one that's driving things. And I think with the new athletic director, uh, I think he will be willing to do it. I'm not sure about everyone else in the leadership at uh, USC, but I think that that uh, the athletic athletic director now, uh, I think we're moving in the right position. Make USC the power. Flex our muscles. Do what Texas and Oklahoma did to the Big 12 the entire time. It it was their conference. They could do whatever they wanted, and no one could say anything because they ran the conference. And, you know, then they left. But USC needs to run the conference. Don't let anyone else do it. USC needs to do it. Uh, if they do it, I'm sure you can come up with a good plan. If you don't like mine, come up with another one. Maybe keep it as is. I don't know. Join the SEC. <laughs> Who knows? Anyways, uh, that's um, that's all my thoughts for this week. Uh, we'll see what uh, what is happening in this coming week. We've got Premier League starting up. I, I'm a big soccer fan. Uh, we've got college football coming less than a month away. So until then, fight on.